Hey guys, so this is gonna be my first ever Java YouTube tutorial. Um, usually it's just time lapses of uh, me coding or showing a demo of the application. But yeah, in this video we're gonna be uh, updating the generic alert dialog that you just saw there uh, to kind of fit more in line with the overall user interface design. So yeah, let's skip ahead and we'll dive right in. So for the majority of this video, we're actually going to be using the application called Scene Builder. Uh, you can download it uh, with the link in the description. Uh, but here's what Scene Builder looks like if you're not familiar already. For this type of tutorial, you should already have a grasp with uh, Scene Builder. As, as it's only a 30 minute video, uh, we're not gonna be showing exactly how to, uh, how to get Scene Builder up and running, but but this will be a really good video for those who already have a JavaFX application, for example, and are just trying to, basically, what all we're doing is getting rid of the silly alert dialog um, styles. So yeah, all we're really doing right now is in Scene Builder, and we're gonna make this window, or the border pane, I'm sorry, roughly uh, a good size for a pop-up window. Uh, the pop-up window is literally just gonna have an error message, and uh, so we're not gonna need it that big, so this looks like a good size. And then I'm actually going to try and fail at copying and pasting these H boxes and V boxes in, but uh, let me just explain it to those who, who don't have Know, the styles and stuff to copy and paste already so all I'm doing is really trying to just copy and paste the title bar over to match uh, so the title bar and our pop-up matches the same styles as the title bar on our login page but if you want to uh, get all those fancy styles all I'm doing is using a cascading style sheet a CSS file um, you link it in scene builder uh, there in the right pane under style sheets you'll you'll link your style sheet and then you can get a little fancier with uh, the styles so the the radio buttons those are actually just um, from Figma a Figma uh, iPhone iOS user interface uh, design template so those are just images and then the background color is um, a dark gray uh, the font I'm using is Lato so if you want to match really closely, yeah, go go get the Lato font from Google Fonts and then get those radio buttons or, or just design them in Photoshop or, or even paint. Just a couple of uh, circles, red, green, and yellow. And then you link them with your JavaFX controller. So yeah, once you get those radio buttons for your uh, close you only need the radio or you I'm sorry you only need the red one for this video uh, unless you're making your whole application you'll need probably all three unless you don't want your uh, users to maximize anyways for this one you'll just need a red close button because all we're, we're I'm actually about to delete the green and yellow ones so once you get your title bar the right height the right color you want it and your close button in there uh, we can move on and then the title doesn't really matter we'll programmatically add our title uh, later on in our fx controller because in our controller we can change the fonts and styles and everything as well so uh, you don't have to worry about the styles too much and then in my style sheet uh, i painstakingly figured out how to make rounded uh, application corners Java FX rounded corners so that's fun I can uh, make a tutorial on that if you'd like uh, just let me know in the comments and anything you see in this video that isn't explained uh, just post it down in the comments and I'd be happy to make a tutorial for it so anyways now that we've got our title bar kind of figured out let me just resize it real quick Perfect. And I'm just gonna run the application real quick so I can see what that dialog looks like. Refresh my memory, awesome. So the title bar is left, but I'm actually gonna keep it centered uh, since every since the title and the, the rest of the application is centered. And now we're gonna remove those 
minimize maximize buttons but we got to make sure that H box is centered to the right cool and we'll just rename this air for now but like I said you can change that in the controller later on and now is the fun part um, let me just make sure This has the same style class as the other one. It does so. Yeah, and we can change the font and the font weight and everything for the title bar in the controller class. So we won't worry too much about that right now. Okay, so we have the icon the air message and then the air description so I'm thinking to let's do obviously a separator in the middle and then probably H box on top and a V box on the bottom so let's go ahead and do that we we'll get our H box and drag it into our border pane maybe uh, no I, I want that to be on the top so we might have to make a second one. Let me f figure this out. Yeah, so let's just do a uh, V box first in the center of our border pane and then an H box, a separator, and then another V box. Awesome. So there's our separator. I don't think I have, oh, I do have a class for it, but I don't think it changes the style. It might it might change the excuse me the paddings and margins but so there's our H box and now we can do it. so we'll just put air and then we'll uh, we'll get an image view for our icon and I already have an icon saved, so once I get this style figured out, I thought I had like, let me uh, let me just refer to the actual style sheet real quick. Um, the bigger the application, the crazier the file structure becomes. So, and that's half the reason why this isn't on GitHub or or public code yet is because it's a mess. It's like it's like bringing over people to your messy house or like you know, don't open don't open the closet. Um, all my messy code. So let's get this. So I'm just going to actually add an inline style make this bigger so it's legible. Perfect. All right, and now we need an image view. But let me let me reposition this first. Uh, if you go down to layout and scene builder, you can change the margins and paddings, uh, so you don't have to do that in CSS, thankfully. Uh, and you can just move this over since it's going to be static anyways. Uh, we we're not letting the user like resize the pop-up window. So um, we can just add some inline margins and then our image view. And then I think I actually have an image saved. Let me look. Images. Yeah, that'll work. I think that was what, 30? Yeah, 32 pixels, cool. So let's go ahead and resize that. And I'm gonna put that on the left side of our air message and then bring it down position. So we'll just make the whole H box center, center bottom. that 
over. Perfect. Now I can bring this back in and I can bring it back up. Bring that down. Perfect. Yeah, I kind of like that. So. both up at the same time nope I do want to move those up just a hair like 10 pixels um, and I might end up repositioning the entire window so all right let's get our uh, H box no I'll probably I'll probably make this a V box depending on uh, just type in our message real quick and then yeah what I think I'm gonna do is this message is gonna be too long I think I'm gonna move half of it uh, below the other so we'll probably need a vertical box yeah, because this is going to be probably too big of an error message to display vertically. So let's get... Move this over first. Left margin. And yeah, I'm going to get rid of this text. So we're just going to copy and paste it into a second label but we're gonna wrap this in a V-Box. So now, when I put a label in here, it will be directly below it. Perfect. Paste that in, we'll match the style. Good to go. All right. So now I can play around with the margins a little bit better because that's pretty much what I had in mind for uh, the dialog box. It matches the uh, user interface design as our application, but uh, it's also a little nicer and it's simplistic, minimal. I might come back and, and tweak the design a little bit later on, uh, like the font color and uh, what have you. Maybe even the background might I might match more to the login screen, but... Let me just resize this window a little bit before we move on to the actual programming. So yeah, we'll just bring it down. I think we'll bring this up a little bit. And that looks pretty good. And let me play around with this for two more seconds. I'm kind of a perfectionist and I wanna fix the margins here a little bit. Bring that up and I think I'm actually just gonna resize the entire pop-up window real quick. Maybe. Yeah, let's... I think we'll just make the whole thing slightly more narrow. We'll bring this up first, just a tad. Yeah, let's, let's make it a tiny bit more narrow. And that looks pretty good, sweet. So... At this point, now we can go into our IntelliJ app or your preferred uh, IDE, and uh, we'll comment out the alert code. And what I'm thinking of it doing is just adding a new stage on top of the current stage, which, you know, the pop-up over our login screen. So uh, we'll cast that to a node, to a stage, we'll call it air stage. We'll get the current source and all the air stage is going to be doing is getting our x and y position positioning of the current stage um, because if you're like me and have multiple monitors it will always default to you know one screen when it pops up so uh, to avoid that we're just gonna grab the current class or the current stage uh, x and y positioning so to do that this fancy code right here for air stage and now all we have to do is air stage get X air stage get Y 
Uh, but we need to make this a double. So double X, double Y. Double X equals, oh, uh, air stage, get X. I said it right. I didn't type it right. Perfect. Now we can do the same thing for the Y. And now, wrap this whole thing into a try catch and uh, you're probably familiar with this code. Uh, just, we're gonna load that FXML file. So really the only thing we have left is to define our controller for the FXML file we just made and then load it. So let's do that. So we're gonna need a uh, FXML loader and new loader and get class will probably just change to yeah. I don't want to make the login method uh, non-static so we'll see I am also in the wrong class so that could be the reason for that uh, I, I'll figure out the load here. We'll, we'll circle back to that squiggly line there, but um, we're gonna try doing a scale transition. I don't know if I'm gonna implement it today, um, but it's just a fun little uh, scale transition. What I like to do is uh, from zero to one, uh, basically at the center of the screen, our pop-up window will be size 0%, and then it will pop up in, I don't know, 50 milliseconds to size one or size 100%. So, uh, and here's the code for that. It's just a simple scale transition. Uh, set our interloper to ease. So it kind of slows down and speeds up as it gets to zero to 100. And set our from to zero and set our two to one. And yeah, that's how you do a simple kind of transitional effect between stages. And you can get really fancy with it. You can do fade transitions, scale transitions, um, bouncing transitions. Uh, it's just math. All right, so after that, uh, really all we have to do is show the stage. So to do that, do stage, stage equals new stage. And set a title, um, we'll set uh, transparency, modality, etc. And then that's pretty much it. We pretty much just overrode um, that generic JavaFX dialog box with like 20 lines of code. So in here, um, view, if you go up to view sample skeleton controller, hang on, let me go back just one second. I needed to grab the width and height of the pop-up. And set the modality. Perfect. Uh, style. I don't think this is necessary. We'll do it anyways. Oh, it isn't. Yeah, because we have the rounded corners, so we do have to set the background stage transparent if you're using rounded. If you have a rounded application, you'll have to do that little code snippet there, and then we'll set the fill to transparent as well. Same thing. All right, and now see. No, stage. Uh, stage, resizable, none, or false. And set scene. That's pretty much it. We'll show it. And uh, here's where uh, it gets a little tricky because my math sucks. So set X, set Y. I think what it's gonna do is set the pop-up window to the top left corner 
of our application. So I think we will have to manually like multiply it by two or just play around with the dimensions. It's all static, so, and it's, the window's gonna be movable. So we'll just play around with it here. Uh, other than that, we'll uh, database dot class. Um, I don't know how I, uh, I mean, for demo purposes, I could just make it non-static. But we are in the wrong class, I keep forgetting. So let me fix that real quick. This all needs to go into the utility class. So we're just gonna do a quick time lapse and I will be right back. Alright, so we got that fixed, but now we are getting uh, error when we run it uh, because we haven't set the controller, or we haven't, uh, I guess, identified our controller class. So we need to go back into Scene Builder, uh, and then if you go to View, Show Sample Skeleton Controller, we can paste the code here, or I'm sorry, copy the code. Uh, I don't want to copy the whole thing because then IntelliJ likes to do this weird thing where it puts a class inside of a class. I don't know why. But we're just going to copy the guts of the controller and we're going to go into IntelliJ and manually make that new file. Uh, we're going to put it in not that directory. Uh, uh, yeah, we're actually going to put it into the controller directory because it is technically a controller. So we're just going to call it Air Controller, I think. And once we do that, we can paste our sample code and import our imports. Label, make sure you import the right imports. Um, and then after that, our closed, dragged, and pressed. It was copied code from uh, when I was copying the title bar over, but when you press, drag, or close, I guess, the, the button or the window, um, that's what those methods are for. Uh, and I'll show that, we'll circle back to those uh, that code, but you just have to uh, explicitly uh, name those or give those ID names uh, in Scene Builder or your FXML file, whichever you prefer. So yeah, we got our pop, <coughs> excuse me. We got that going, but uh, we still are getting a controller issue. So what I'm going to do is just manually open the controller file. The file structure is so wonky right now in this application. I'm going to just manually update that controller in the FXML file. So controller, um, com, a caulking solutions, uh, controller there we go air controller and once you do that it should be finished you should be getting a pop-up a custom pop-up dialog pretty cool there it is it's not draggable yet it's not closable yet but it's our pop-up and it looks a lot better than the other pop-up so now we need to fix a couple things we need to make it draggable closable and um, we need to change the positioning. So I'm, I know this probably isn't gonna work. Uh, we're just gonna try multiplying both of the values by two. I'm not sure what this is gonna do, but I think it's gonna make our pop-up window invisible. It's gonna make it off the screen. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah our pop-up's gone, so. Uh, instead of plus, or I'm sorry, instead of times two, I'm thinking plus uh, half of the dimensions. So we might need to go into Scene Builder and get the dimensions of our current window and just add half. 
Yeah, so we got it back. And I did too small of a increment to see if it's doing anything. Two pixels is tiny. Um, so I had that code back in, and uh, now it's just a matter of doing some visual math, if you will, uh, to see what this does on the screen. Um, so we got it positioned onto our parent stage, but now we want to get it centered onto the parent stage. So we lowered it, and then we'll just add uh, like 500 pixels to the X value or whatnot. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. And there we have it that is pretty centered to me we'll just tweak it a little bit again since I am a perfectionist uh, I'm trying to align the title or the titles uh, but yeah now the last thing we have to do is just uh, some modification to our controller class to make the window closable and draggable so let's come into here and we should have already had, um, and that's the code for our title font. So we'll make sure we implement initializable and we'll uh, add those methods or the method. And now we can copy and paste the code for our title from our original login. So we get the matching title and window login for our pop-ups or pop up and the login page. Yeah, we'll just put it right here. And we got our close pressed and dragged. You're welcome to pause it, but that is the code for uh, custom title bars. And there we have it. Custom error message in less than a half an hour. I appreciate you guys watching and sticking around. Um, any constructive criticism is always welcome and i look forward to reading your guys comments thanks so much and have a good rest of your week